Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, the menstrual cycle and how that relates to fertility and the female contraceptive pill. The whole process of the menstrual cycle is controlled by three hormones in particular which you need to know the names of. They are FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. The role that plays is in stimulating the follicles inside the ovaries to start an egg cell maturing ready to get released. Oestrogen, which among other things controls the thickness of the lining of the wall of the uterus. And LH, or luteinizing hormone, which is what stimulates an egg to be released. Let's have a look at how the levels of these affect the different stages of the menstrual cycle in detail. The pituitary gland, buried deep under the brain, is responsible for some of the hormones involved in the menstrual cycle. The first stage of the menstrual cycle, for the first four or five days, is the stage when the lining of the uterus from the previous month is steadily breaking down and passing through the cervix and through the vagina during a woman's period. At this time, known as menstruation, the level of FSH being produced by a woman's pituitary gland increases. This increase in FSH stimulates the ovaries to do two things. Firstly, a follicle within the ovaries will start to develop an egg. That egg will be maturing for the next few days. Secondly, the ovaries start to produce an increasing amount of oestrogen. The oestrogen then goes on to have two effects of its own. Firstly, this increasing level of oestrogen causes the lining of the uterus to start to thicken again. Secondly, the increase in oestrogen causes the pituitary gland to stop making as much FSH and the levels of FSH fall. The pituitary gland produces a range of hormones and one of the other ones which it produces is LH or luteinizing hormone. The level of LH in the body remains fairly low for most of the menstrual cycle but partway through the cycle it very suddenly and rapidly increases. This sudden increase in LH stimulates the ovary to release the egg that's been maturing since the start of the menstrual cycle. This is ovulation. LH levels then fall quite rapidly and remain low for the rest of the menstrual cycle. Oestrogen levels fall now that the uterus lining is thick enough to potentially be able to support a developing embryo and towards the end of the menstrual cycle, in the last few days, if a fertilized egg cell hasn't arrived and embedded itself in the uterus, the uterus lining starts to break down. Finally, FSH levels fall and remain low until it gets round to the start of the menstrual cycle again, and the whole process begins once more. This is a pretty complicated looking graph, but don't worry, no one's going to ask you to reproduce this from memory. The things which you need to know about this are much more basic. Let me just run through those one more time, just to pick out the key points which you need to be aware of. Firstly, this whole process starts at the start of the menstrual cycle, here in this period that we call menstruation, where the uh, uterus lining from the previous month uh, passes out through the cervix and then through the vagina. Around about that time, the level of FSH starts to increase. Remember, that's produced in the pituitary. And that's what causes a new egg to start maturing in the ovary here. This is the egg which is going to be released later on in the month, but it needs to start maturing right here at the start of the month. It also stimulates the ovaries to start producing uh, the oestrogen. And so the oestrogen levels start going up because the FSH level went up. Now oestrogen has two effects. Firstly, when it gets high like this, it reduces the levels of FSH. It stops the pituitary producing as much. And it also causes the lining of the uterus just here to start to thicken. Then around about the middle of the month, the level of LH suddenly jumps up. And that's the period that we call ovulation. That's when an egg is released. And it comes out of whichever ovary we're dealing with. If it's then fertilized, it can then embed in the lining of the uterus. But otherwise, when we get towards the end of the month, the levels of oestrogen drop again, the lining of the uterus starts to break down, and it's getting ready for the next cycle of menstruation, which starts at the beginning of the next month. That's all that you need to know about how these hormones influence uh, the process of the menstrual cycle, the process of menstruation and of ovulation. 
In the second half of this lesson, we'll look at how women can use the information about what the hormone levels in their bodies are doing throughout the menstrual cycle to control their own fertility uh, for reasons such as fertility treatments and contraception. Good luck in your GCSEs, everyone. And if you found this lesson useful, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe or share. Thanks for watching.